It's Frontier Conference basketball from the opening tip-off to the final buzzer. Twelve of the best teams in the NAIA. Six men, six women, all fighting the right to represent at a national tournament. We bring you all the action from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena right here in Great Falls. Our games are brought to you in part by First Interstate Bank, BSN Sports, Pepsi, Nike, the Gibson Hotel in Great Falls, McDonald's throughout the state of Montana, D.A. Davidson, Independence Bank, Logan Health, Conferro Sports Foundation, Clark and Louis, Northwest Energy, and Irk Hotels throughout the state. Hey, if you're ready, it is time. Set back and enjoy the call as it's time for Frontier Conference Basketball, and we're bringing it to you right now. For more than 85 years, D.A. Davidson has strived to build relationships and trust from our first office in Montana to each of our 70 locations spread out coast to coast, we're on the ground and in your neighborhood, combining the values of a local partner with the capabilities of a national institution. We achieve strong outcomes based on mutual success, planning for future generations and building legacies that endure together. Are you ready to unleash your awesome? then you need 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS. You'll have the powerful internet you need to stream, game, learn, and work today, and be prepared to take on anything new you can dream up tomorrow. Imagine internet you'll never outgrow. Get 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS and embrace infinite possibility. fans thanks for joining us we are courtside right here in great falls it is the pacific steel four scenes arena i'm jim Sargent, bringing you all the action as we get ready to have some fun with you for this evening championship night my good buddy caden joins us and caden uh, been pretty good basketball here so far hasn't it yes it has jim we've had close matchups we've had heartbreak we've had a little bit of everything going to cap off tonight with a great championship game here in the women's you take a look at these teams in the Frontier Conference, they're just so, so competitive, aren't they? I mean, they just match up so well. Oh, exactly, Jim. And, you know, a lot of powerhouses, a lot of big stars. You know, Jamie Pickens for Carroll, Kiana Salavea for the Argos. It's going to be a star-studded action here tonight. They play fast, they play physical, they're fun to watch. So these two teams obviously have matched up before, uh, two and one as far as the schedule goes. And when you talk about the Frontier Conference, you have to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, they play so many times against each other. There's no real big secrets, is there? I mean, you kind of know what's going to happen. The big thing is, is can you get the shot to fall on a neutral floor? Yep, exactly. You know, you play, you've matched up three times on the year. You know what you're going against. You know what to expect. It's really who's going to play harder, who's going to make that key play, hustle, free throws, the little things are really going to separate of course, one thing we got to tell people is you haven't been here at basketball all that much because you were doing some softball for the University of Providence here earlier this week. 
Yes, sir. It was exciting. Softball, a little 4-0 sweep against Corbin. We had to go out to East Helena, go play on their turf field. Yeah. Matty Moore threw a, or pitched a, a no-hitter. That was exciting. And, you know, they're undefeated in conference to start the year. We're excited for that. It is an exciting time, to say the least, as we get ready to bring you basketball coverage here from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena. And uh, looking forward to... Uh, Get it all started here for championship night. University of Providence takes on, of course, uh, Carroll Fighting Saints out of Helena. They traveled over here, and it was uh, interesting to say the least because we had a little snow shower here in central Montana. And I say that with the fact that a little snow shower dropped, I don't know, it might have been about four, five, six inches of snow out there. Uh, light, fluffy snow, of course, and uh, always makes it interesting for travel at this time of year. Not only is it Frontier Conference basketball season going on, but also we have basketball at the state level uh, that is happening in some of the divisions and then also you get into the state action going on next week that'll be back here at the Pacific Four Seasons Arena where we have State C and so we're looking forward to that. Baker Bob's on the other side. He's going to give us the play, the uh, starting lineups, excuse me, just a little bit. I see Jason, the mascot, is over there as well. Jason is here and uh, ready to kind of get things going for us, get him fired up and uh, get uh, this contest underway, so it should be a lot of fun. Our starting lineups, we're gonna do it this way as we have the University of Providence will be the visitors on the board, and they will get it underway like this as they have uh, for a while. They do have, of course, uh, a starter that has been out just a little bit with some injuries, but uh, is back and suited up here, and uh, we'll see if she plays. And, of course, I'm talking about McKenna Regeer. Uh, she had kind of an ankle fracture, I think, and then uh, kind of fought through that. So here's how the University of Providence is going to get started. They'll start with number two. It is going to be Monique Carter. She's a 5'7 freshman from Pullen, uh, Washington, and, of course, a great ball handler. Here is not the freshman of the year, probably, but probably the player of the year between her and Jamie Pickens because Ashley Maldonado is outstanding. Graduate student at 5'7 from Sunnyside, Washington. Colby Pemberton is uh, Charlie Hustle. I tell you, she just does everything. Not recognized as much as she could be at 5'7 and a junior from Belt, Montana. Maddie Dixon, over 1,000 points in her career, and she is a senior at six foot four from Pomeroy, Washington. The fan base is here for her. And here is a true freshman from Vancouver, Washington, Kiana Salavera, a 6'2 freshman. Head coach Bill Himmelberg's been at it for about 14 seasons, and they will host a national pod play-in game here in the University of Providence. So let's go and take a look and see what's going to happen here for the Carroll Fighting Saints. They will go this way. They will start with number zero. Albrecht is Willa Albrecht. She is a six-foot redshirt junior from Billings, Montana. Kendall Keller is an outstanding player. I think she's going to be a swing person in this contest. How she plays, they will do. A senior from Haver, Montana, just a great person at 5'9". They'll also start with Addie Ekstrom. Ekstrom is from Bozeman, Montana, a guard at 5'10". And, of course, they also come out with Jamie Pickens, as we talked about just last year, player of the year, Helena, Montana. She is a senior, and she is the one you have to stop. She did play for the University of Montana for the Grizzlies. And then, of course, Maddie Garretts is a 6'2", a junior, or graduate uh, redshirt, excuse me, from Boise, Idaho. And she's just a very physical player in there, so we'll see how it goes for the coaching staff over there on that far sideline. Rachel Sayers is in her, also in her 13th year. And it uh, should be an exciting matchup between these two. They've got a lot of history, don't they? And it's going to be fun to watch and see how who gets off to the good start in a, in a neutral gym. So. Yeah, exactly, Jim. you got guards that play quick. They play fast. you got posts that play physical. They're going to get after it tonight. People ask who gets to be the home team and how that is figured out. Well, what happens is uh, the higher seed gets to be home. And it's not really a true bracket formation as uh, the higher seed always gets to play the lower seed that's left in the tournament. Well, it is going to be championship here because it's time to go. And it's going to be Carroll to handle the basketball as they take off with it first on the offensive end. They'll take it down on that left-hand side and be very patient with the ball early as the Argos pick them up man-to-man -man defense here. And they continue to pass it around. And the first foul is going to be called here in the contest. And it's interesting when you take a look at it, the fouls are ones that really build up or can pile up in a hurry. And that definitely affects the game, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely it does, Jim. You know, we've seen some of these games kind of get foul heavy towards the end. I think the refs are going to try to get on them early. You know, the players play physical. It is a championship. 
So. Here's a drive to the glass and good defense from Kiana. She stands and takes a hit. Maldonado will bring it to the front court to the left-hand side. As we are court side right here on the far right as you see it. And uh, basically you have a shot. Well, if you look at the camera right now, that's exactly where we are. Camera's right to our left-hand side here. They do a tremendous job. Uh, keeping the game online for you and you get to experience what we get to experience as well. So it's a lot of fun for us to be here to bring you the coverage. Here come the Argos back on the defensive end now as the Saints will bring it to the offense. No score as of yet as we roll into the quarters now. We got to remember that because we just had a guys game and congratulations to Von Tenetech. The Diggs get their third conference championship in a row. They're pretty tough and they too will host one of the national play-in games. Garris will take the shot, a little bit nervous. <laughs> this little bit can tell nerves or excitement. They're early. And oh. yeah, just a little too far yeah. on that shot. Yep. She shot over the top, so a little nervous there. But we will settle down and get going as Argo's coming back on the offense now as they'll bring it to the front court. And they're being very patient looking at the man-to-man -man defense also as it's going to be a pick against Keller. And they'll get rid of it there. Moe gives it back over to the uh, left side. Ashley has it back to Moe. Now over here to Dixon. A couple of dribbles with nine to go on the shot clock as they bring it down on the inside. Top of the key, and a foul will be called here. And that's a pretty tough twist right there for Carter. That right ankle kind of popped over to the right-hand side. She's trying to shake that off with a grimace on her face. Ouch. That looked like it just kind of stung a little bit. You can see it there on her face on the camera. She's kind of leaning into it, working that right ankle around a little bit. I'll tell you what, she's tough, though. She can really play. Here is the shot. It is up. It is rattling around. Not quite in. And second opportunity coming here. Still scoreless. A little surprised by that. After what we watched in that guys game, man, it was a horse race. Up and down, and they went, and, and it was exciting. But... Uh, Right now, we are scoreless with 8.28 to go in the first quarter. And nice nice crowd for tonight in this championship matchup. They're a little quiet. I, maybe they yelled too much for that last game. I, I think so, Jim. But once we get a couple b b uh, baskets rolling here, they'll pick it up again. They will pick it up, and we'll get rocking and rolling here for this Saturday night. Hey, thank you, everybody, that has checked in and that has offered to help us. It, it's been amazing to put this tournament on. And, uh, yes, I get to do a lot of it, but it's just fun to have people involved in what we are doing. So the Argos lead it 2 to nothing here early in this one. Argos coming back on the offense. And not in sync as of yet. Last night when we watched Kendall play, she was lighting it up. She had 20-plus points last night. So far, nothing on the board. Trying to get it inside to Jamie. And there's a steal by the defensive, uh, defensive stand of the University of Providence. Ashley Maldonado is going to try to split the defense. And we'll give it to Dixon. Dixon, man-to-man -man defense inside. Steps through. Now tries to step through. Lobs it up off the glass. Missed that one. Long rebound. And Kendall Keller's got it for the Saints. She's always got her head up on a swivel. You notice that? Yeah, always looking, always feet moving, eyes up. And I can tell a heavy em emphasis so far this game on defense. Teams are really getting after it. High screen rolls by the offense. There are a lot of hedging. So it's been a good one so far. Foul is going to be called against Dixon. Argos have two personal fouls, or team fouls, I should say. First personal foul against Maddie. So we go to the free throw line, and Albrecht will be there to get the shot. Interesting, only scores we've had so far is from the charity stripe. Exactly. And yeah. free throws, they're going to be key to this game. You see a lot of these teams' struggles in this tournament with free throws. It's really going to help define the winning I team would today. I agree, yeah. So we're tied at 2-2, and everybody's got a free throw. So that's how we scored here. So we're 100% on each side, team-wise, at free throws. That's easy math for this Chester guy. Here come the Argos back in the offense. Dixon will get it over to Maldonado. Back out top of the key. Dixon thought about the three, decided not to. They run kind of a weave offense here. They take it and scoop it in, and a steal there. And here come the Saints on the offense once again. And well, here come the Argos back the other way now after that steal. We'll come down inside. Kiana, pretty quiet so far. Hasn't gotten involved in the offense too much as of yet. Dixon does have it on that left baseline. She thought about taking the shot there and decided not to. 6.53 and counting here in this one. Carter to the glass up and in. No, Banks not open on a Saturday night. 
Could get that one to go. You kind of get a sense everybody's a little tense. I mean, the Argos beat the Saints by 20 once this year. But the Saints have defeated the uh, uh, Argos a couple of different times. And neither team is shooting well at all right now. It's 2-2 two to two in a championship game. And both of those scores, the four points, have all come from the free throw line. That is where we're at. <laughs> Here comes Keanu the other way. Pickens tips it loose. They tie it up, and the officials both come together and say, let's jump it up. The arrow favor the Argos in this case, going away from their bench. We'll see if Scott Crawford doesn't join us at halftime. We look forward to talking to him. He's the, count, the, the commissioner of the Frontier Conference. We enjoy working with him at this tournament here in Great Falls, which, by the way, the home is back again next year. We'll have the tournament here again next year. Maddie Dixon from top of the key. Bingo! Drained it for three. The first field goal of the night for either team. And it's Maddie Dixon hitting the three way out top as she drains that one from downtown. Here come the Saints trying to answer the other end. Missed that one as Albrecht couldn't get the shot to go. And the Argos have the rebound. One and done for the Saints. Here come the Argos on the offense. Long three on the way. Haymaker is up and a foul is going to be called. Albrecht picked up the foul. Kobe's shot is fun to watch. I mean, that thing gets in the clouds and comes down, doesn't it? It's almost close to hitting the Raptors up there sometimes, Jim. Yeah, she's super fun to watch. She's been shooting really well the last couple weeks as well. She has. She's been working on that a lot. Uh, we see her at the university. Caden and I both work at the university. He is the events manager there and, of course, assistant AD, and uh, I get to do a little broadcast in my day. And shot is missed there from Kobe Pimpton. She'll get another one. Coming up here, five to two is the difference. Argos in front over the Saints. A lot of time in this quarter still yet. But she'll get her third one because it was in the act of shooting three. And so she will get another one here coming up. Here comes a shot, and that is good. She's got it. Seven five, Argos in front and a five five. As we come back the other way now, and here come the Saints with the basketball. Pickens is trying to get it inside. Got tipped loose by Carter a little bit. Dixon bounced up to her and blocked. And they call the foul, which is a tough foul because Pickens was the one creating the contact, but Maddie went up with that right hand. And as you see it, you can kind of see that she went across. Yeah, that's a tough one, Jim. That is her second foul as well. Going to take her out of the game early, which is a hard hit there on the Argos early. Second foul against her, so T will come in. Lee, who was not feeling well at the regular season, end of the regular season. Says she had some kind of stomach virus or something or some kind of flu or whatever bug. And uh, she's back in, played uh, first last night in that game against Western, did very well. Pickens hits the free throw, and the Argos coming back on the offense now. 5.27, and Maddie Dixon with two fouls had to go to the bench. So, interesting matchup that Pickens is picking up uh, Salavea, but at the other end, it was Dixon on Pickens. Ashley looking to create a shot here. Step through, and she had a lot of dance moves, but just couldn't get anybody open to shoot it. So pretty good defense from the Saints right there. It's been a very high intensity defensive start. Carroll still doesn't have a basket yet. All four of their points off of free throws. A lot very of turnovers. Low scoring, yeah. It's ridiculous. Seven to four. <laughs> it has been very slow. Championship night. Montana Tech men won that over Carroll. That's why you see a lot of Carroll fans here. Of course, both teams playing in this championship. Kendall thought about the long three. We'll take the long three. She'll hit the long three. Kendall Keller drains it from outside with that shot and ties it up at seven. Seven seven is the score here. 437 to go. Pemberton takes the drive through, double team, kicks it back out to Carter. Carter has to chase it down, then behind the back dribble. Takes it in against Kendall. A little hard off the glass. And Pickens one and done as he gets the rebound and they take off with it. Quickly going the other way is Ekstrom. Erstrom will go down on that far right side, gives it back to Kendall. Kendall gets away with the travel, now goes left-hand side. They'll set it back out here. 15 now, well, 12 to go on the shot clock. 
Garretts will take the shot from outside, front of the rim, no good. And both teams, very basic basketball uh, fundamentals as they box out there, don't they? Yeah, they make sure they get a body on body, go get the rebound, you know, offensive yeah. rebounds, second chance are really, it's gonna help change this game down the rebounds stretch. Rebounds sure can make a difference. As here comes Pemberton, takes it to the glass, good defense there, blocked. Lee tries to save it from going out of bounds and didn't quite get there. So Talia will have to, to bring it on the inbounds, but it is time for a media timeout. We appreciate our sponsors that allow us to be here. Our new sponsor on board with us is the Gibson. We invite you to stay at one of the newest hotels in Great Falls. Warm, friendly atmosphere and a friendly staff that's ready to assist you in your every need. When you check in, this is the kind of room you will receive. Clean and comfortable where you get wonderful breakfast and how about a nice glass of wine upon your check-in. Easy check-in with your professional team to assist you. Make your next reservation at the Gibson, downtown Great Falls. There are two types of people in this world. Those who love Taco John's and those who haven't tried us yet. We're a destination for excitement where your wildest cravings and our wildest creations meet in crispy, melty, zesty harmony. Sirloin steak, homemade pico de gallo, and our taco shells are fried fresh every day. At Taco John's, every visit is a chance to go bigger, live bolder, and eat better. And once you get a taste, there's no going back. A bolder option is here. Taco John's. Thank you so much for joining us right here on the University of Providence uh, and the Carroll Fighting Saints championship game as we enjoy basketball from uh, the Four Seasons Arena, Pacific Steel and Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls on a snowy Saturday night. Yeah, we got a little bit of snow here in Central Montana, and uh, it has been exciting to say the least with this weather. Interesting uh, winter this year. I mean, it was just kind of warm and uh, nothing, and then kind of like in the middle of February, all of a sudden it was uh, old man winter says, well, I guess I better make a visit to Montana. So they brought us some cold, and, and then we got a little snow now as we roll into the month of March. Second day of March, hard to believe that already. But uh, March Madness is coming up, and we're going to kick it off right here as we have 7 7 is the score. And the Argos and the Saints, of course, a lot of history between these two. Jamie has the ball, lobbed it down inside, and another foul going to be called here. We're still in the first quarter. We've got quite a few fouls here four against the Argos, and two of them against Dixon. Maddie sitting on the bench over there on that far side. So they try to stack it up. They will get it to Garrett's top of the key there with a couple of dribbles down inside to Jamie. Jamie has it. Kiana's on her. Doesn't take the fake. Now back out top of the key. Left wing three from Keller. Her shot up. No, couldn't quite get it. I thought maybe on the back spin it might spin back in, but it didn't. So here come the Argos back the other way trying to break the tie as it's backed up. Maldonado has it. Ashley from 15. She's got it from there. She's such a quick shooter, isn't she? Yeah, she really is. She gets to her spot, and she knows what she wants to shoot. And it's just a pure same rhythm every time. Breaks the first tie of the night as she hits that one and makes it 9-7 to seven in our contest. As they come back the other way, Keller with the basketball. Tries to split it down into the two top scorers on this team, Jamie and, of course, Kendall. Jamie turned around jumper and missed it. And a little touch foul there. Must have got her on the shooting arm, it looked like. And that's another, a, another big foul. A little replay yeah. coming your way yeah. here. Yeah. Now, this is actually Ashley uh, coming up for the shot here. She hit that one. But, but yeah, I mean, fouls are going to be a, an issue here. That's three on the Argos, their post players early on, too. So that's going to see how that affects them here at the end of the first quarter. Still two minutes and 31 seconds to go in that first quarter. Very low scoring. <laughs> I mean, you got a total of 17 points on the board in what, eight minutes? Yeah. Just under eight minutes, I guess, with 2.23 to go. Carter coming back the other way, loses it, and a foul will be called here. Kendall kind of looked around and says, me? Not quite the same as the guy's game, is it? And I, and I say that with respect, but there's a lot more physicality in the guys. They push around, they bump, yep. they, you know. And here, that was just kind of a, you know, got her on the arm. I'm not saying she didn't follow her. 
but it was called a little earlier. Yeah, they're really getting after the touch fouls early in this oh, game. Look at that shot. Look at that shot. Ashley Maldonado takes it in and uh, makes it. Puts it on that left shot and spins it off the glass and puts it in for two. Here comes back the uh, Saints now, trailing 11 to 8. We roll under two minutes to go. Garris has to chase it down. Powers away, dips her shoulder. That's going to say that's going to be player control. Yep. Yep. Something they've really focused on this year, too, especially in this tournament. They've been calling it a lot. A little out of control there on the drive, lowered the shoulder. It's going to get called every time. Yeah, official right on that and said, uh, made herself some room. Yep. So that's her first as Garrett picks up the foul. Here comes Maldonado for the Argos. Back on the attack now. As Lee has it, tries to get around Garrett's. Contact, nice shot, Lee, boy. That was, that was smooth with the right hand there. With the contact, she puts it in. And makes that one. 13-8. Championship game here from this uh, Frontier Conference. Both teams will represent, by the way, in the national tournament. As here is a shot. And... I think Kiana got a hand on it. Yep, uh, yeah. yep, Kiana got the hand up, playing great defense on Pickens early to start this one. That's going to be uh, an offensive foul. foul. <laughs> okay, get right back <laughs> the other way. Yeah. And, and Carroll really has struggled to shoot the ball to start this game. They're one of eight at the moment. Yeah, I just kind of watched yep. in the replay there. and uh, Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Neither team is shooting yeah, well. Nope. That's not a lot of shots up yet. Nope. Argos do lead at 13 to 8. We're about a minute two to go. And around the key they will come. Back out top the key now. They take it on this left hand side, back to the right hand side. Shot is up and rattles around. Good. Jamie will knock it down and makes it a three point lead for the Argos with under a minute to go. And here comes Maldonado back the other way. Maldonado tries to split the defense. Looks, gives it over to Kiana. They had the pick and roll there, but just didn't quite have her head up ready to pass it. With 10 to go on the shot clock, Lee being guarded there. Cross angle, top of the key, back over to the right side. And shot is up, missed that one, as Ramirez couldn't get that shot to go. And the Argos will go back on the defensive end. Saints have a chance to tie with a long distance shot here. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Off the right hand side patient with it here's the shot rolls around no good missed it and the Argos will win quarter number one by three 13 to 10 as we take a break it is the championship night it's basketball from the four seasons arena and we've got it for you right here as we bring you the action from the frontier conference basketball championships Great Falls has so much to offer. And Great Falls' newest hotel, the Sleep In & Suites Mainstay Suites, is here no matter what your reason for travel. Come stay with us and enjoy well-appointed guest rooms, a hot breakfast daily, pool and hot tub with outdoor patio and barbecue area, fitness center, and so much more. Montana owned and operated, we're proud corporate partners of the University of Providence Argos. Sleep in and suites, mainstay suites, 10th Avenue South and Fox Farm. Or check out our website, sleepingreatfalls.com. Some places try to get away with skimming a little off the top. Not at my joint. Godfather's Pizza doesn't cut any corners. Our dough is freshly made every day. We don't sprinkle on a little cheese. We pile on 100% real mozzarella. And we ain't chintzy with the toppings, neither. Every pizza is loaded with the highest quality meat and fresh veggies. And nobody, I mean nobody, can compete with our specialty pies. Like taco, humble pie, classic combo. Don't settle for skimpy. Get the real deal at Godfather's Pizza. 
It's basketball on a Saturday night as we roll to the 8 o'clock hour. The Saints are battling it out with the Argos. Argos lead the first quarter 13-10. to 10. Saints will get the basketball for the second quarter here as we get it underway. As they will see into a, a zone defense as Coach Bill has mixed it up here for the Argos. Passing the ball around here as Ekstrom will have it. Back out top key inside the paint. Looking down inside and still inside. Fan from behind says three. The official says, I can't agree more. So they do call it against uh, Erickson. She was in the key quite a while, though. Uh, she camped. She put her tent up in there <laughs> on that one. <laughs> she was there long enough, and I could hear it, even with headsets on, that uh, I could hear someone back there that was uh, asking for a little bit of help, and they got it. So there you go. Here come the Argos on the offense. Maldonado, Pemberton still in there. Lee, uh, Maddie Dixon back in now with those two fouls. And also Ramirez. As Carter got herself in a little bit of trouble as they get down to eight seconds now. Maldonado to Ramirez, top of the key, bingo! Drained it from outside, top of the key. Ramirez comes off the bench and hits the three and extends it to a six point lead now with the Argos in front. Saints coming back the other way. Ramirez broke it loose out of Jamie's hands for a minute. Now they go back in, nice touch pass there. And Dixon had to stay away and not commit the foul there. Yeah, smart move by Dixon there. Stay away as no as much as you want to block that shot. You got to play smart basketball, and she did right there. She really did want to go up and try to block it, but a good uh, move there as Ramirez goes in and is going to draw the foul. And uh, Isabella is who we're talking about with that shot, and she might have gotten the foul just there too. She did. That's foul number one for her. Yeah, you can definitely tell the intensity is picked up here to start the second quarter for both teams. It's interesting because you'll see Coach a lot of time, they will go out and say, let's go and pick them up full court press to kind of get those legs going and kind of get the things happening because uh, uh, it was uh, not very intense at all in that first quarter. Both were kind of just a little nervous. It's championship. It, they know each other very well, obviously. So Free throws is good, by the way, for Ramirez. So that's good, 17-12. As we go back the other way, as the Saints now trying to get some baskets going here. As they need one. Out left-hand side. Bounce it to Erickson. Bothered there by Carter. Erickson gets it back. Very persistent. Shot right wing. Bingo! Nice shot out there from Albrecht. As she hits the trifecta from downtown. Nice shot in her part, brings it back to a two-point contest. Ashley a little quiet so far, haven't heard a lot from her. She handles the ball so well. Saints have gone into a matchup zone now. They do hand it to Ashley, free throw line, hand check, dip shot, no good, missed it, comes out and picked up by the Argos. They'll reset it to 20. Fired it down to Lee Carter. She will go in and take the shot. And we'll go to the free throw line. Nope, they said the shot doesn't count. Before the shot on the ground. Garrett's will check back in. For the Argos coming off the bench is Cam Cartwright. So Cartwright checks back in for the first time in this championship game. Referee says, hey, what are we doing? <laughs> oh, we got to get the uniform stuck yeah. in. There you go. So Maddie and Cam will stack it here. Maddie comes out to the right-hand side. They forced it over to Cam. Cartwright backs it up here. She's a pretty good three-point shooter. She wants to get in the flow of the game, of course. Ramirez loses the ball. It's a scrum. Garrett picks it up and will hand it off to the Saint as Ekstrom will come to the front court. Addie with the ball will reset it up here. Out top of the key, handling it out on that side. Tip just a little bit. One thing I see with the Saints is their offense isn't flowing like it was last night. Long rebound comes out. Ramirez goes and gets it. Ashley will set it up for the Argos here on the baseline. Shot up and in. She's got the shot. Yeah, great good body control right yeah, there. Great move by her. She gets the defender on her hip. She knows exactly what she wants to do, and she executes well. 19-15, Argos in front. Second quarter action. Thank you to our friends at Godfather's Pizza for supplying our hospitality room tonight. Uh, they said they were busy over there. That's good. Yeah. They were really busy. That's good. Those wings were delicious, Jim. <laughs> they are good. 
Three, right wing is no good. Rebound fought for Dixon's got it. And that three was just off the mark over there. Carter will set it up here for the Argos. Maldonado is going to draw the foul, and I say that as you take a look at it. She really had that left shoulder dipped in there. Yeah, yeah, she was definitely initiating some of that contact, but the ref saw otherwise as she gets pushed to the ground right there. So we will go to the free throw line. As you can see what we were talking about right there on SWX Pepsi Replay. Thank them guys for working with us. Ashley makes the free throw, keeps it a five-point difference. Always wonder when you sit here and watch as many games as we do, what team is favored by a lower score? You know what I'm saying? It's obviously a team that likes to run, a higher score is better for them. But both these teams are pretty methodical in their offenses. Yeah, exactly. They know what they want to do, They want to, where they want to get to, and both are defensive-minded, but both have the capabilities to put up high numbers on offense. I think the Argo would rather run yeah. more with it. Nice little pull yeah. up there. Oh. Jamie with the shot and is going to draw a foul here. Pickens will go to the free throw line. Pickens will, has she scored yet? She has five, five. at the okay. moment, yep. yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Cartwright picks up the personal foul. That's her first. Second one coming up here. As Jamie bends down and takes the shot. 20 to 16, Argos in front, 5.55 to go here in this one. Here's Jamie's second shot, it is up and in. She's got that one to go. Keanu Salvail will check in for Dixon for the Argos at the 5.55 mark. Both teams are so athletic. I mean, they're just so good as uh, you watch these two go at it head to head. Caught right with the basketball, we'll back it up here. They set a pick for Carter, who will drive, pull up a 16-footer. Yeah. That's like a layup for her. Yeah. She can shoot. Especially coming off the screen there at the free throw line from Salavea. Opens that space up beautifully. 22-17. As the Saints come around the other way, Garrett will throw it way over here. Good elevation from Albrecht, having to go up to get that one. Then they go right back to her. She'll spot and stop and got it. Bingo from outside. Trifecta, yes. Was it three? They, I think they called it a two, two on the I floor. So, yeah. Sarge, yep. Foot yeah. must have been on the line. It was very close. Ashley's going to try oh. a three. She's got yeah. a bingo from outside. Yeah. What you on can do, I can do better is what Ashley says right yeah. there. I'll match you. It's 25-19. Two talented basketball squads going to represent. Out-of-state teams will come to Montana at both locations. How odd is that? Albrecht, right wing. And Ooh. yes, she gets the shooter's yeah, touch. Yeah. Soft bounce right there off the rim. Shooter's touch for her. She knocks that one down. 25-22. Scoring a little more prevalent now. Maldonado will take it to the glass and draw the foul. Asked Ashley one time in an interview, I said, have you ever had anybody steal the ball from you? She goes once, and it made me so mad. I, I worked really hard not to have it happen again. So, time out on the floor. We'll break. It's Frontier Conference basketball right here from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena, Great Falls.
appreciate the fact you join us right here from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Caden and Sarge with you as we are courtside. And uh, thank you to the staff on the other side. That's all your scorekeepers right there and all the uh, important people that uh, make this thing happen on this side of the floor. And so thank you to those folks. Three-point contest. Argo's in front. They have the ball underneath their basket as Maldonado gives it to Kiana. Kiana has not uh, scored as of yet. And Maldonado goes in, takes the shot here. Has had a little bit of contact with the defender. No call there from Neeson. And they'll take off the other way. Nesson uh, has the ball now. She has it out on the offensive end. Off top of the key. 4-0-4 and counting here. Second quarter action. The champion for the Frontier Conference. And they count it down with eight to go on the shot clock. Good ball. Mom Albrecht goes inside to Garrett's to Pickens. Nice little give and go there. And Pickens puts it in for two. Uh, really smooth ball movement there. The high, the low. And the offense has really started to pick it up here in the second quarter. One point lead. Argos led it by three at the quarter break. They lead it 25-24. As they try to get it over to Ashley, they do. Ashley step back three, no, off the irons, no good. Rebound and off the, the foul as Cartwright committed the foul. And will take off and go the other way. And just one of those fouls where it's all hustle too. Two players going for a rebound, unfortunately. Just get on the more physical end, get the foul called on you. Here come the Saints back the other way. And they will have the ball out top of the key. Right hand side being a little more patient. Ekstrom behind there. Lost it and picked up. Nice uh, steal there by Cartwright. She's going to get the layup the other end. Up and in. Nice pass from Ashley Maldonado. And Argos extended back to a 27 24 difference here. And we'll go back as the Saints trying to get a basket here. A lot of distance with their offense here, really working the corners. They lob it to Garretts, who then comes out left wing. Three is good outside. Outside is Addie Extra for three. Bozeman Bobcat person right there. She went to Bozeman High School, I remember, back in the day. And makes that one from outside. Tied at 27 for the first, second time of the night. We are tied at uh, on the scoreboard. Long three there off. Jamie's got the rebound. And we'll hand it off to the point guard here. Abby brings it to the front court. With 2-10 to go in the first half. Give and go to Jamie. Takes the shot. Low leaping leaner is no good. Gets her own rebound. Didn't get boxed out. Now she'll go up against a much shorter player as trying to guard her there was Carter, and that's not going to happen very often. No, and that's a tough shot, too, right over the top of the defender. She's really good at elevating on her shots. Saints take the lead now, 29-27. Might be their first lead or second uh, of the night. Keanu Salavea has the ball probably a little further from the basket than she would like. Now they wait for her to get inside the paint. She goes center court as Pemberton comes with the right-handed dribble. Looking to get it to Ashley with five to go on the shot clock. Scoot shot and up and in. What a great yeah. creator that was. Uh, beautiful touch there on the lay. A little underhanded right over the rim and in. Through the fingertips and in tied again. Our third tie of the night. And you knew this game was going to be close. Saints coming back the other way. Around the perimeter they go. Three on the way from Albrecht. Good. Bingo from outside. She's up to 13 points now on the night. Jim, she's really carried them in the second quarter on the offensive end. 13 of 32. She, she has the lead them now as the Saints lead at 32. Carter trying to answer the other end. She'll bank it in for two. Carter banks that one in for two and makes it 32-31. Saints in front. 40 seconds to go in the half in our championship game from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Pickens, top of the key. Around the perimeter, trying to spread that offense out as Garrett will go in. Her turnaround jumper's hard off the glass and in for two. That's just going to be a mismatch every time down the floor, especially in this zone that the Argos are playing right now on the 34, defense. 34 31, Saints in front. Argos could take the last shot here. We'll see. 
With 10 to go on the shot clock. Carter waiting for a pick. Now they come out. Stop there. Both have switched, and a three-point shot is going to be good. And they call the foul on Jamie Pickens, who was 35 feet from the basket. And they will, well, or did they? On the board, they have it. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so Jamie picked up her first. At least two shots, maybe three. Yeah, I think she was inside the arc. Yeah, they called two free throws here. Okay, up so Carter at the free throw line will get two, makes yeah. that one. With 3.1 seconds to go in this turn, we've seen a lot of wild stuff. That's still a lot of time. Exactly. It's a very odd foul there, too. She felt the contact, though, and was able to get the shot up. Here's the second shot. That is no good. Missed it. Two seconds to go. Tips it in. And the official said that Colby was on the line. And so they will give it back to the Saints. Up by two with 1.3 to go, and they may just catch it and hold it. We'll see. There's the catch, and there's the hold. Now she tried to shoot it, but it was to no avail. They will head to the locker room. We're going to take a break. The Frontier Conference Commissioner will join us in just a moment right here as we bring you Championship Saturday night from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Montana. We're proud to say it's where we live and where we work. We're so much more than pretty scenery. We are all hardworking, resilient, and resourceful. The vibe is different here. Stockman Bank, Montana's brand of banking. metal for cash? Come visit us at Central Montana's leader in recycling, steel, etc. in Great Falls. Our center processes steel, stainless steel, aluminum, copper, brass, and lead. And we pay cash for scrap based on weight. We also accept batteries, electric motors, paper, cardboard, and more. And our roll-off containers are available for any scrap projects you have. We even buy and recycle junk cars. Trade your scrap for cash. Visit us at steeletc.com or call us at 761-4848. We have made it to halftime of our championship right here for our second championship on this Saturday night. As women's basketball has been exciting, Saints lead at 34 to 32 at the half. As promised, Scott Crawford joins us with the Frontier Conference Commission. Uh, Scott, let's talk about this. Uh, first time you've seen the tournament here for you uh, in Great Falls. Uh, your thoughts so far? Excellent tournament. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, the quality of basketball has been very high, and uh, I uh, am very impressed. It's been a lot of fun, and you've had a chance to travel to all the schools, of course, and that you knew coming into this, this Frontier Conference was going to be so competitive. I do want to ask you about the pod selection. Three schools in Montana get to host a national play-in game. That's, uh, that's incredible, actually. When you think about there's only 64 teams playing in both the men's and women's side. There's 16 men's pods, 16 women's pods. For us to get that many, uh, we got the lion's share. So, obviously, the University of Providence, very proud that we get to host one over in Carroll on the women's side and then Montana Tech for the guys' side. Absolutely. The selection committee is on Thursday. How does that go? Explain that to people. So, the, the conferences and the independent group have until this Tuesday to get their qualifying tournament or event or whatever done. And uh, several conferences like the GPAC will complete theirs on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, the committee will meet. And on Thursday, they'll release the, uh, the, the qualifiers in the morning, I believe. And then the actual bracket will come out later that day. Uh, we're excited about it. Uh, do we know what times they are and when they will be? Or is that all just the, kind of depends on each site? It'll spend a little bit on each site. It'll, for us out here in the West, we have a little bit more flexibility with the scheduling. But, um, 
you know, they're, they're, um, the, school, the NAI is going to give you a little bit of parameter, but for the most part, you're going to have some discretion. So I'm guessing with that four-team pod, you're probably going to do like a 5 o'clock and a 7 o'clock game or a 5 and a 7.30 game on Friday, and then probably a mid-afternoon game, potentially an evening game the next day. They're going to want to get those teams back on the road as, if possible. Of course, yeah. Uh, obviously, the Frontier Conference is strong. We have our normal teams on basketball again next year, but in 2025, we have some additions. Let's talk about that. Well, we have a for sure addition in Dickinson State University, and we are in the, the, the discussion process with uh, Bismarck State College. They are a junior college in Bismarck and uh, have applied for NAI membership. And pending that decision coming up in April, they would then uh, we would then look to approve them as a Frontier member school as well. So a minimum of two schools joining us in 25-26, but we're still hopeful that the other four North Star schools will make a final decision as to what their future is. So we're talking about Bellevue, Dakota State, would make a really excellent pairing, and then Mayville and Valley City. Yeah. And uh, my, my vision, my hope, is that we can get to 12, and that does so much for us. It gives us more conference games, less non-conference games, less triple header kind of craziness in this state with yeah. our basketball. And then it also will give us baseball, conference softball, potentially men's and women's wrestling. It's, and it's, and it's going to solidify our golf, and it's just going to be really positive for us. I would think the ADs and coaches love it because we beat up on each other so many times that they'd like to play some different competition. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, the old phrase about a rising tide will lift all ships. And so I think bringing those schools into the conference, those sport expansion, the quality of play, you know, Bellevue is no, is no slouch, right? They're, they're oh, yeah. pretty good in a lot of sports. And uh, I look forward to the opportunity to improve – I mean, it's already a great conference, but to improve and in, in not having to play the, the three games in volleyball and the three games in basketball, it's going to be a, a much more fair representation of how our teams are on the national scene. Yeah, because a lot of people have uh, actually confused a little bit with what's going on with football because Dickinson State's in the football conference uh, uh, that, uh, with the Frontier, obviously. Uh, but it'll kind of add to that. As you said, with basketball coming in and possibly even putting wrestling on top of this. And I really like the fact that you said baseball, especially with baseball coming in at the high school sports here in Montana. I really like those opportunities. Absolutely. So one of the one of the things that's holding this up is that those schools really need a solution for baseball. And we've told them, come Dickinson, Bismarck, those four all have baseball. It would solidify their automatic qualifier. And then something that the fans need to hear about is that you know, if we get to 12 in volleyball, if we get to uh, 10 in basketball, then we're talking about a second automatic berth yeah. and not having to worry about is our second team going to get in. Now we have to worry about is our third or our fourth team going to get in to the national tournament. And when the Frontier Conference goes to the national tournament, we're pretty good. I mean, we don't lose too many first-round games. So I heard a lot of people chattering about Montana Tech and his, as a potential Final Four type program on the men's side and i think these two programs here are, are on the women's side are exactly in that same boat you yeah. know and uh i mean they're they're one and two in our arc of, of four conferences the two best teams come out of the frontier conference that's pretty special yeah and obviously western winning it a few years ago on the women's side so yeah that's pretty good scott thank you for what you do and i appreciate working with you here you've been a uh, godsend of insight of things that we can improve on and how we can make it better and continue to improve what we're doing in the entire frontier conference well you and doug and all the volunteers and the argo staff have just done an amazing job and made my life a whole lot easier Thank you very much for doing that. Thank you, my friend. Scott Crawford is the commissioner here for the University of Providence and the entire Frontier Conference, and uh, absolutely fantastic. We enjoy everything he has done. Halftime, it is the Saints 34, and it is the uh, uh, Argos 32. As we take a break and check in with some of our sponsors that allow us to be here, uh, that includes some of the colleges here around uh, the great state of Montana. My name is Matt Allen. I'm the Director of Admissions at the University of Montana Western. 
Montana Western is the only U.S. public institution uh, in the country that operates on a block scheduling model called Experience One. Instead of your semester looking like this in a traditional system, the block schedule at Montana Western looks like this. This innovative approach allows students to really focus on that one homework area, have one final, uh, communicate with one professor. Uh, more importantly, there's one professor communicating with that class. The big difference between Montana Western and other institutions is that our students typically have two to three years of experience in their field of study. And it's experience that employers and grad schools are looking for. And like I said, it's experience that a lot of college students don't typically have at that point in time in their academic career. Student success is our top priority. So our faculty and staff are here to help students through their entire student experience. For more than 85 years, DA Davidson has strived to build relationships and trust. From our first office in Montana to each of our 70 locations spread out coast to coast, we're on the ground and in your neighborhood, combining the values of a local partner with the capabilities of a national institution. We achieve strong outcomes based on mutual success planning for future generations, and building legacies that endure together. Are you ready to unleash your awesome? Then you need 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS. You'll have the powerful internet you need to stream, game, learn, and work today, and be prepared to take on anything new you can dream up tomorrow. Imagine internet you'll never outgrow. Get 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS and embrace infinite possibility. It's basketball on a Saturday night. Thanks for joining us right here from the Pacific Steel and Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Sarge with it. Caden joins us in here. And uh, numbers in the first half were pretty low. I mean, Ashley Maldonado with 12. But nobody really kind of got rolling there until that second quarter. Yeah, exactly, Sarge. Uh, Albrecht from Carroll hit a couple threes in the second. She's up to 13 points. But a uh, big key here is... Kiana Salavea for the Argos hasn't even taken a shot attempt yet, and she's one of the leading scorers. So she's going to have to try to get this going here in the second half. I remember that happening in that Rocky game, the last game of the season, and then she lit it up for like 15 in that second half, and she just said, you know what, I'm done. I get five fouls, I'm going to go and start attacking the basket. Is that the case today? I guess we'll find out. On the other hand, it took a little bit for Jamie to get going for the Saints. Pickens, uh, uh, like I said, did get going late, but uh, it took her a while to find the basket. Both teams, you can tell her, came in with a game plan, try to limit Pickens, try to limit Salavea. They've been executing pretty well so far. The Argos did go to that zone in the second quarter, and I'm intrigued to see what they're going to do to come out in the second half. 
I have received a couple of text messages of people saying, what is this pod? What is this arc you're talking about? Well, what happened is back in the old days, everybody went to say like Kansas City or Iowa or whatever for the tournaments. Well, now they spread them out throughout the country and then you end up going, uh, qualifying from here to go as they cut it down to about in half and then they go to Sioux City, Iowa for the national tournament. So we will host on the 15th and 16th uh, here in Great Falls. Teams yet to be determined. We know we're in. We will have three other teams that will come and uh, be here. You want to support that. And why? Because it brings money to the community. Hotels, meals, gas, all that stuff is taken care of. And you know what? A lot of these people, I remember in the volleyball, when the team from Florida came here, they said, I want some stuff from Montana. We may never come back. And so they went uptown and, or downtown, however you want to say it, and did some shopping here in Great Falls. They loved it. They loved all the small little community stores. Well, yeah, Great Falls is definitely an awesome community. A lot of small businesses to go out and support for all these teams coming in. It'll be a great time. I believe it's also our first time ever hosting yes. one of these pods, so that'll be exciting. Look forward to putting that together. We will get the official start times and all that. Uh, we just found out on Thursday uh, when they draw that. So we were here at the tournament, and then, of course, we figure out exactly what we're going to do. Excuse me. What we will do at our end, uh, there's some sponsorships and just some things you have to do, and so we will get that going. We will get the official times coming your way and let you know, but we do know it will be at the University of Providence, McLaughlin Center. We're excited to host it there, and uh, it will be on the 15th and 16th. We'll play the uh, two games. Uh, we will play on the 15th and then the championship night on Saturday to uh, see who will go on and represent at the next level. So looking forward to that. It should be exciting. We still got more basketball coming your way here from uh, Great Falls as it is championship Saturday night. Montana Tech men uh, really played well. And uh, I tell you what, Carroll battled back and forth. Obviously, the wild and crazy game that we had in the semifinals against Carroll and, of course, the University of Providence. And then uh, they battled back. Uh, Tech got ahead of them, and they came back, and uh, kind of went up and down. And then it was finally Tech pulling away there uh, towards the end. So congratulations to them. As far as the championship goes here for us, we are headed into the uh, action again as it is basketball on the women's side as it is the Saints and the uh, Argos going back to back. As you talk about uh, Salavea, there she is right away getting involved in the scoring as she puts it up and in for two. So the Argos will tie it up. This is our fifth tie of the night. And here comes the uh, Saints now right in front of the uh, announcer stand. Left wing three off the mark, no good, and it sails out of bounds. Long shot there from uh, Ekstrom. And she's got a couple of those tonight, though, I believe, doesn't she? She, she is. has one well, three so far. Yeah, yeah. Addie does. So yeah. yeah, yeah. All these kids can shoot yeah. anymore. It's amazing. 34 34, 920 to go here in our third quarter. Long three outside, bingo! Maddie Dixon extends on her 1,000 points a career as she knocks that one from outside. The Argos get the lead back, 37-34 now. And here come the Saints on the attack. Albrecht will handle it. Top of the key, they get it over to Garrett's down inside to Jamie. Jamie double, now triple team. She draws a crowd. Three at the top from Keller, no miss that. Loose ball, Jamie gets the touch. And sends it right back into the hands of Ekstrom. And holding it there. On the far left side, Keller dribble drives, backs it up here. And goes left elbow. Garrett's for three. Boom! She's got one from outside. Her second three, or her second field, I guess. She's got five. Kendall Keller with only three points tonight. She had 20-plus last night. As here comes the Argos back the other way, tied again for the sixth time. We're tied at 37. Dixon with a dribble drive, left hand there. Head and shoulder fake as Carter stepped through. Fadeaway jumper off the glass, left side no good. Keller works around about four or five different people and finally comes up and gets the rebound. And will bring it to the front court. 37-37, championship Saturday night. Law pass inside to Jamie. Pickens, turn around, got it from about 10. Nice shot, Jamie Pickens, go down the other way. 39-37 now. Jamie with 13 on the night. She's leading scorer, I believe. Leading the way here. 
Carter going up off the glass. Nice little layup there. She takes it up and in. Nifty drive there and a nice finish with the right hand to get away from the defense there. Dane's coming back the other way. Tied again. Back and forth we go. Top of the key. Three. Shooting. Not making. And rebounded by the Argos. They take off with it going the other way. Heading down to this far end. As the Argos are tied with the Saints. 39-39. Here's a take to the glass. Maddie Dixon, yeah, nice pass. And Dixon gets the shot off the glass for two. Maddie knocks that one down. And back the other way, Saints coming on the attack. 41-39, 6.50 to go, third quarter action. Top of the key, Albrecht will get rid of it over here to the right-hand side. And goes to Ekstrom. Garrett, she'll spot for three, no, not that time. And they battle for the rebound as Salvea keeps it going. Looks like Grimace a little bit with Pickens down on the floor. She stayed down there a little bit. Then a hard foul at the other end. I don't know if she got knocked down by Keanu or what, but uh, she was bound and determined to shove Keanu at the other end. She just came down there and says, uh, I don't know what you did, but I'm not going to take it. And you can see it right there. <laughs> uh, hard pushing foul there. She's got her second. Interesting matchup between those two, so it's kind of fun to watch. Argos up 41-39, and they do have the basketball, but Pickens gets a steal now. Jamie will steal the ball, and will take off with it, bringing it back the other way. Lobs it inside to Garrett. Looking, looking, waiting, double team, far left corner. Left baseline now, they get it down in around the perimeter. Jamie has it, it's gonna power her way inside the glass, double team. Cross angle pass, spot, shoot, three, no, missed it. Battled for and goes out of bounds. Saved back into the hands of the Argos, and here they come on the run. On the offensive attack is Maldonado, Ashley, with a left-handed dribble to Maddie. Dixon inside to Garrett. Scoop move up and couldn't get the shot to go. Battles for a rebound, and Pickens will get the rebound for the Saints here. 5.34 and counting. Keller, Garrett thought about the three on that left wing. Decided not to take it now. It's interesting to watch the matchup when Jamie gets it. You see three, maybe four defenders that yeah. coming in there and trying to stop her. She's got it down deep and takes a shot. Good defense from Kiana. And here come the Argos on the run once again. Ashley Maldonado stops there. Sister of Emily Maldonado, one of the assistant coaches. Kiana with a long three. That's off the mark, no good. Big smile in her face. As, I don't shoot many of those, she says, but nope. I can make it. Yep. She's definitely trying to get her shots up here in the second half. A little more going to the go-to people in each nope. team now. Yep. Jamie has it, and she's going to be fouled. She's going to complain to the official. The official yells back at her. Now she yells at the official. And the foul is going to go against Kiana. And they are going to call a timeout. So let's break as things are heating up here on a Saturday night. We break away. Argos up 41-39. We're back in a moment right here from the Frontier Conference Championship Saturday night. Montana has one of the highest suicide rates in the United States. Suicide impact. Of all ages, genders, and ethnicities. On average, 300 Montanans die each year by suicide. Our best chance of stopping suicide is to stop the stigma. It's time to talk openly and honestly about mental health issues. Together, let's take the pledge to be allies against suicide. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Cleaner and Laundry Center is your must stop to get those items clean and looking new again. If you're tired of doing laundry, then don't. Falls Cleaner and Laundry Service can take care of it. If you'd like to do your own wash, well, you can at Falls Cleaner and Laundry Center. And don't forget they have free Wi Fi so you can check out your Facebook posts while you wait. Falls Cleaner and Laundry is a complete dry cleaning bundle drop off and coin operated machine facility. They are helping the Argo stay fresh and clean all season long. It's Falls Cleaner and Laundry Center open daily, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. with attendance on duty. I have to giggle just a little bit because the computer is tired like I am. <laughs> I hit the button and it just goes, I'm going back. No, I'm going back. I'm going over here. 
That's all right. Hey, we're here and we're making it happen. It is the Argos up 41-39 as things are heating up here a little bit. As uh, Keanu will go to the uh, uh, bench now with three personal fouls. Not in the act of shooting, so it will be the Saints to get the basketball underneath their basket. With 15 seconds to go in guarding, Jamie now is going to be Dixon. Jamie slides underneath for the three on the corner is good. As Willa knocks that one down, Albrecht hits the trifecta and gives the Saints the lead back by one, 42-41. Frontier Conference women's basketball is strong around the nation. It's fun to watch as it's a foul here as Ashley Maldonado creates again. She's really good, Sarge. She's just getting into the defender, creating a shot and drawing fouls. See her drive here and put up that shot. She's good at shooting on the opposite side with the same hand. And I say that she can be on the left-hand side of the basket, but yet she shoots with the right hand. And, uh, and she's good at that spin, too, to make it go up and in there. So that is pretty good. Although not at the charity stripe, rolls that one in, ties it, and takes the lead back. As Maldonado will hit that one. Ashley has 14 for the night already. She has a one foul. So here comes the Saints down by one. They'll come off this right-hand side. And they get there. Nissen will get rid of it to Jamie. 15 footers good. Smooth as silk as she nails that one from outside. We'll swap leads back and forth now with eight ties in the contest and at least four lead changes. Maldonado creating here, now tries to split the defense, takes it up, and body contact, had it stripped out of her hands from Jamie, then we'll get it back to Lee. Lee tries to set up the offense, back to Ashley. Ashley leads the way, draws a lot of crowd, and they roll on the floor, loose ball, and finally the Saints are going to gather back. Keller takes off with it, great ball handler. Here comes Kendall, takes it to the glass, stop, whistle, and a jump ball will be called. Error will favor the Saints here with 23 to go on the shot clock. And Tissy's definitely picked up here in the second half. Definitely has. They're going at it. It's fun to watch. It's going to be a great finish. As you watch Jamie and Maddie go head-to-head -head here, they clear it out for Pickens. She looks at it. Here comes a double team. Step through move. Rolls around. No good. Missed it. And then rebounded by the Saints. Saints will reset, but Ashley Maldonado steps in front and gets a steal. It's a two-on-one situation. Allie from about 10. Ashley's got it for two. That is her spot, too, that quick little pull-up about eight feet away from the basket. That is money for her. 45-44. Argos in front. 3.05 to go in the third. This fourth quarter is going to be fun. As here come the Saints now with the basketball, trailing by one. Albrecht over to Keller. Kendall. Has it right here, right side. Thought about the three. Comes with the left hand, dribbles hard to the glass. Up and in, Kendall Keller for two. Powerful move from Keller. Have her blue pony. Nails that one down. I called her state championship in Shelby. And love the family. They are just absolutely great people. Here comes Carter the other way. Hard wow. foul. Hoop and the harm is good. That was a lethal crossover move right there. Sarge, a little hesitation, got by the defender, drew the contact, and what a finish there from Mo. Mo takes it in here, takes it, and fouled. And that's going to be number three on Pickens now. Salvea has three. Jamie has three. Carter at the free throw line to extend here, 47-46. Shot is up, and bingo, she's got that one. Carter hits that one, knocking it down. She's got her 11th point of the night. Argo's up 48-46. Here comes Kendall back the other way. Definitely getting a little more involved in the offense now. As Jamie takes it in the glass, and a reaching foul will be called here. That will go against Lee. She reached in a little too much. Talia gets her second, and Jamie will go to the free throw line to shoot two. Nice crowd here on this Saturday. I'll look around here. It's nice that Helena played back-to-back, -back, I guess, because they had a good uh, following, as you see. Uh, quite a few purple shirts over there. Spring break going on. That's always tough. <laughs> Everybody says, yeah, okay, so. we'll go to some of the yeah. games. I remember last year the place was packed with students. Tied again, our ninth tie of the night. 
Tied at 48. These two teams know each other. Ramirez, no, couldn't get the shot to go for the Argos. Pickens with the rebound, fights off the defenders, and they get it out. And here they come to the front court with Kendall. Keller gets a pick there. Stop. Top of the key. They thought about taking the shot there from uh, Erickson. Did not. Now they come around to Albrecht. Will clear some room for herself. Takes it to the glass. Puts up the shot. Falls hard to the ground. It hit her out of bounds. They'll give it to the Argos here. Tied at 48. And let's see, I think uh, Kobe's going to check in with a minute 37 to go in the third. Ashley Maldonado will get a little break here. Officials are looking at the coaches and said, sit down, we got the call. So here come the Argos, and a T is finally going to be called against uh, Rachel over there. They had told her a couple times to back up, sit down, and they're going to finally call the T. And so technical foul is called. And that means it will be the Argos basketball after they get a shot here. They can extend the lead or they can open up a lead as we're tied at 48. And so Maddie Dixon will go to the free throw line to shoot here. So Maddie at the charity stripe to get the shot. It is good. She's got it. And would get one more, two shots on the technical. So she gets one more, and the Argos will get the ball on the sideline. And nails that one. And so the teams will come back onto the floor again. The Argos extended it by two. Three, one, two, three, four, four technicals in that men's championship game. It was heated. We've had one here as the coaching staff for the University of the Fighting Saints picks up the technical on the sidelines. Argos get the ball. They'll bring it on the inbound. Sometimes you do that to fire up your team. We'll see what right. effect it has. Argos with the ball. Up by two. Lee for three. Shot at about a foot short. Was not there. And here come the Saints now. Back the other way. Wanting to force the action. With a minute 14 to go. Jamie with the basketball. Three personal fouls. Her and Dixon will match up again. Keller right in front of us. Hard left hand and a foul from Ramirez. As that is called against her. Ramirez has really improved the latter part of this season. I enjoy the fact she's come out on the floor and playing well. Saints to bring it on the inbounds. Trailing by two. As they go down on the baseline, cross pass, nice pass from Jamie Pickens. Nice cut to the glass there from Erickson from Broadview, Montana. The four, uh, freshman, or excuse me, the uh, redshirt sophomore. So I wasn't sure if it's a freshman or a sophomore. She's a redshirt, which could be a junior. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows <laughs> nice, nowadays? <laughs> nice little give and go there from the Argos. And they take the lead back after our 10th tie of the night. 52-50, 34 seconds to go in the quarter. That fourth quarter is going to be fun. Don't leave us. Here's a steal. Argos have it, and then a tackle in the backcourt. They play through it. And 24 seconds to go as they'll come back the other way now as Carter will back it up here. Shot clock is off. Game clock is 14 seconds. Backing it up. Carter waits. Keller will pick her up. Man-to-man -man defense, Carter splits to the right, loses it for a moment. Long shot from Kobe Pemberton, no good. And with a second to go, it will run out. Fourth quarter is going to be a good one. I would stick around. After three, the Argos lead it by two, 52-50. And it's more basketball championship Saturday night right here from the Pacific Steel Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls.
ready to unleash your awesome? Then you need 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS. You'll have the powerful internet you need to stream, game, learn, and work today, and be prepared to take on anything new you can dream up tomorrow. Imagine internet you'll never outgrow. Get 8 gig all fiber internet from TDS and embrace infinite possibility. Anything is possible in this one. It's a close one. We've got an awards presentation to follow. Stick around for that. As we had Montana Tech men win on that one. Carroll, of course, in there for the second place. And right now, Argos lead at 52 to 50 after three. Tied 10 times unofficially. And because um, I'm not very good at numbers, I'm just telling you. And it's fourth quarter action. The Argos will get the basketball to start. Ten minutes for this final game of the tournament from Great Falls. Ashley Maldonado back in. Spots from three, nailed it. Nailed it from outside with the big shot right there. 55-50. Ashley Maldonado knocking it down from outside, just shy of 20 points at 19. Top of the key, trying to answer that. And she does, nice job there from outside is Nissan. Erica knocks that one down. The, the graduated red shirt hits that one. And what you can do, I can do. 55-53, Argos in front by a couple. And right now, here comes Ashley Maldonado on the take. Her lip is missed, and a foul will be called. She's definitely trying to take over here in the fourth quarter for the Argos. Again, initiates that contact, finishing with the offhand, gets bumped, two free throws here for the Argos. So with that said, they will come and put Maldonado at the charity stripe. Shot is good. So she'll get another one here. Here's Maldonado. Her shot is good as well. She makes both of them. How about 21 points for her? Great game so far from her. Expect her to keep pouring it on here in the fourth quarter as we get down to, to a close finish. Well, here comes the Saints back the other way now. They have the basketball. Lob it to Jamie. Her and Kiana, nice match up there. Keller has it. She'll take with the left-handed dribble, goes to the glass, takes it up, and a foul. Number four against Salavea. And Salavea will take the walk back to the bench. And it will be Cartwright to jump off the bench as Salavea picked up her fourth with 8.52 to go in the corner. That could be costly. Kendall Keller at the free throw line. Here is her shot. It is good. I believe she's right around 83% as a free throw shooter. Keller six and misses that one. I jinxed her. Sorry, my friend. Uh, jinxed her with that. 57-54. Fourth quarter action. 8.45 to go in this one. And here comes Maldonado, Argos in front. Backing it out here. Trying to get it to somebody. She handles the ball so well. Back out to Carter. Carter and Keller, Maddie to Carter. Take it to the glass, off the layup, missed it. Missed it, and Cartwright commits the foul there. You don't want those. No, no fouls 90 feet away from the other hoop. Those are definitely, could be costly here. So that is a foul. Yeah, they called it against Carter. I think they I did. So. They give Monique the foul. So Monique Carter, the freshman at 5'7", picks up her first. And the Saints coming back on the offense. As Keller has it there, they'll set a pick. And Jamie is being guarded by Ashley for a moment. Then Dixon will come back and match up again. Here's a drive to the glass, a little aggressive take to the glass, rebounded, taken care of, shot is up, no, missed it. And rebound goes out to the side. Saints really hustling after the ball right now. Keller's got 16 seconds to get something developed here. She likes to go to that left, thought about the three. Garris can't hit the three. She's one of three from behind the arc. Trying for the 500 percentage, she shot an air ball. A little strong there on that shot, Sarge. Sails out of bounds. And Argos bring it on the inbounds, 57-54. And here come the Argos 
in the lead with the basketball with 7.35 to go. Do me a favor and get out and thank those sponsors. Allow us to be here if you would. As there are a number of them. As a hard foul there, no call as Jamie runs right into Maddie. And they didn't call that one. And here comes Maldonado back the other way. She'll take the shot. Scoop shots up and in. That's a tough finish over Pickens there in the paint as well. A tough take to the glass. 59-54, Argos in front. 7.07 to go in the fourth. As the Saints with the ball. Ekstrom will get it to Garretts. Garretts goes inside to Jamie. Quick step to the glass. Hard foul from behind from Dixon. As Jamie really had a quick step. I always talk about that. You can be quick and you can be fast. And quick is just that quick explosion. But fast, you just outrun me down the other end of the court. That was a quick step right there. Great move. She's done that a couple of times in her career, obviously. I see her coaching somewhere. I have no idea if she has any thought of doing that. I've never talked to her about it. As she hits the free throw there. But don't you see her being just a great coach somewhere? I agree with you, Sarge. I, Carol would be a great opportunity for you. She's from Helena. I can see her sticking with the team. Yeah. No uh, idea what her major is. Uh, nope. Really high basketball IQ from her. Free throws are good. Makes it a three-point difference now. 6.48 to go. And here come the Argos up by three. As Kobe has it, step through move, puts up the layup, can't hit that one. Everything but the finish on that one. And Kendall will back the other way. And a foul will be called against Garrett's underneath. As some contact. Fighting back and forth there. As you see him battling, and Garrett's just hooked Cartwright and just kind of pulled her back. <coughs> Excuse me. And with that, Garrett's picks up her second. Here come the Argos, back the other way. Maldonado with the basketball. And Coach Bill wants to call a timeout, so they will grant it. We'll step aside as well with 6 2 25 to go here. 59-56, it's a good one with the Frontier Conference Championship on the line. We're back in one minute. We invite you to stay at one of the newest hotels in Great Falls. Warm, friendly atmosphere and a friendly staff that's ready to assist you in your every need. When you check in, this is the kind of room you will receive. Clean and comfortable where you get wonderful breakfast and how about a nice glass of wine upon your check-in. Easy check-in with your professional team to assist you. Make your next reservation at the Gibson, downtown Great Falls. want to say thank you to that newest motel here in Great Falls, the Gibson. Great folks down there. Stop in and say hi to Savannah and the crew if you would. You will enjoy that. No question about it. So hopefully you will do that and get down in there and uh, Century located downtown. How can you go wrong? So thank you, our good friends at the Gibson. So you ever been there? I've not, but I will. You gotta stop in yep. there. They're very nice. Yep. It is so good. They have some wonderful cookies. Oh. I'm just <laughs> I, 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 I uh, voice my uh, opinion on a lot of food issues. <laughs> Here come the Argos up three. Maldonado with the basketball. Draws a crowd. Pemberton on his left wing has it there. She'll drive and attack the glass. Give it over to Cartwright. Looks to give it off to Ashley. Does. Five to go on the shot clock. Top of the key. Pemberton. Who is from outside? Colby Pemberton from way outside hit that one. The junior from Belt, Montana, tinkles the twine from behind the arc and hits it from downtown. Here come the Saints back the other way. Pickens cross angle. Trying to answer the three on this right wing. Does nice shot outside. From outside is going to be Albrecht. She tinkles the twine from out there. Nice job on her part. Back and back. Boy, you just got athletes on these teams. They're just so good. Here comes a Maldonado, double team, goes to Dixon. She tries one for the three, shot it off the rim, no good. 
Pickens has the rebounds, and the Saints coming back the other way. Down 62-58 at the 520 mark of our fourth quarter. It's March Madness on a Saturday from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Sarge with you. As Pickens wheels around, takes it to the glass, and she's going to take it. And did they count the basket? Let's see. Buck is good. She will go to the free throw line. What a quick move. You see that? Watch this quick move around there. She hooks, comes up, and then she's just wide open and goes right around the defender. And Jamie at the free throw line to shoot here. 62-60. Shot is up. It is good. She's got that one. Jamie knocks it down for her 22nd point of the night. And Kiana will check in. Let's mark that. Kiana Salavea with 5.09 to go in the fourth has four personal fouls. Here comes Maldonado with the basketball. Leading it by one. Double teamed there. Quickly down the other way. Gives it off to the hands of Pemberton. Colby on the dribble. Top of the key. He's moving around, takes it to the glass, stops on the baseline. Ashley will clear it back out with eight to go. Inside to Calavana as Salva, Salva, excuse me, puts it up. A little hard off the irons and missed that one. And couldn't get it to go. Argo's back on the defensive side. Pass, tough pass across there from Keller. And blocked from behind, but a little too much foul there. They will call the foul on... On... Not sure who they call it. They call that on Maddie Dixon. Maddie there. Dixon, That's her fourth. Timeout. Let's take a break with them. Media timeout with 4:32 to go. We break away. Argos lead it by one, but it's going to be a thriller down to the end. We're back in a moment right here from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. Check it, check it, check it, check it out. Introducing the new and improved taste of Pepsi Zero Sugar. Now more delicious. Zero never tasted so good. Try it now. So many flavors of dew. I am thirsty. I must get the dew. Cut, cut. He's hypnotized again. Do the dew. This season, score big with one of our many cars under $30,000. Talk about winning plays. Our financing team is here to help you with affordable options. We offer payments under $500, and that means more money for your fantasy football bets. With our certified pre-owned lineup, every car is thoroughly inspected, so you can drive with confidence. That means getting to the game without worry. Just over the hill from high prices. They sound the horn on the far side of the gym, and they say it's time to play some basketball. As we take a look at three timeouts left for the Argos, four for the Saints with 4.32 to go. As we continue with this championship night, we'll come back and we will go to the free throw line. They did call the fourth foul against Maddie Dixon. She has four. Salabea has four fouls in there. And it looks like it's uh, two fouls against Garrett. Three against Pickens, three against Addy Ekstrom, and Kendall Keller has three. Albrecht only the one foul. So a little bit of foul trouble down this final four minutes as the free throw is good. That'll tie it up. 11 ties in the contest. And next free throw coming up here is good. So Albrecht knocks them both down, and Albrecht hits that one with her 19th point of the night. And here we go back the other way. Saints take the lead with the 424 mark. Salvea to the glass, goes in, and she'll put the shot up there, missed it, and rebounded, taken care of by the Saints, and they'll come back the other way, up one, 63-62. Back the other way, here comes the Saints, Ekstrom, Addy has it there. Down inside to Jamie. Jamie will go in, takes it up against the two, and she powers it in for two. Soft. Jamie, go ahead. Soft roll there on the rim. On the rim is what I was going to say. She has great touch around the rim. Very good shooter with 24 points. Saints lead it by three now as they come back the other way. Argos, long three, trying to answer it. Good, Maldonado from downtown. Yeah. That's her 10th point of the quarter, Sarge. She's really turning up here. And ties it at 65. As we go back and forth here with 3.30 to go. 
Garrett has the basketball. Way out top of the key. Inside to Jamie. They will double up here. Back out to Garrett. Right wing. Around the perimeter. They look for an opening. The man-to-man -man defense being applied here. As Albrecht goes in. Loses it. And off the shot. Missed it. And the Argos come back the other way. Tied at 65. We knew it would be good. We knew it would be close. Maldonado top of the key. The best of the best come out when it's game time. Right side, Carter has it there. She'll take off to the glass. A little fadeaway, 10-footer no good. Tipped out. Pickens has it. And will to bring it up for the Saints. Walking it up the court here is Ekstrom. Addy comes out to between the center circles. Got the free throw line. Pass it over to Keller. Kendall trying to get rid of it. Goes up. Garrett down inside to Jamie. Ten-footer is no good. Missed that one. Pemberton will pick it up. And they'll head down the other way. Excuse me. We go down the other way. Here comes a dribble drive from Maldonado. Matty Dixon has it. Cross-angle pass to Carter. Down inside to Salavea. Goes up. Foul from behind. Who's it called on? They say it was going to be called on Willa Albrecht. As it kind of gone either way, but Salvador will go to the free throw line. Shot is up and in. Good. She'll break the tie at 66 65. Another shot coming up here for Kiana. Her shot is up and it's got that one as well. 67 65. Two point lead, 2 10 to go. The Argos have been in a lot of close games this year. I remember early season. I mean, there was a lot of close games. And when you win over 20 games throughout the season, that's pretty impressive. Give and go to Keller. Backing up here. Field continues with the dribble. Now she comes around. Pulls up from 15. Rattles it in. In and out. No good. Kendall, man, having a tough night. Could not get that one to go. And Keller, uh, Kendall has had some opportunities with only six points so far to this point. Argos up by a couple here. Time is really becoming a factor. Maldonado to the glass. Left wing. Three on the way. Pemberton couldn't get it to go. As Kendall gets it. Back out with 18 to go. Back over to Carter. Carter with a couple of dribbles inside. Wide what open. Matty Dixon. Wide open. What a great pass, as you said. And hits it down. Nails that one. And the Saints need a timeout. The Saints will take a break. With 1.11 to go, it's a full timeout. Argos up by four. We're back from the championship Saturday night right here at the Four Seasons Arena. Montana has one of the highest suicide rates in the United States. Suicide impacts people of all ages, genders, and ethnicities. On average, 300 Montanans die each year by suicide. Our best chance of stopping suicide is to stop the stigma. It's time to talk openly and honestly about mental health issues. Together, let's take the pledge to be allies against suicide. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. The other guys, they think they know what special means. At Godfather's Pizza, we do special, and we do it better. We add the tea. There's a Godfather specialty pizza with your name on it. Classic combo, all meat combo, hot stuff, taco, yeah, even veggie, and more. All of them piled high with the best toppings and 100% real cheese. Treat yourself special. Order specialty pizzas from Godfather's Pizza. We get ready for more action as it is the final minute and 10 seconds in regulation, we better say, because this thing definitely could go to overtime. Saints will bring it on the inbound. Keller will get the ball as they do. They go inside to Jamie. Jamie backs her way down, comes up, shots off the rim, no good, missed it. Shot is going to be off the rim, missed twice, and then Jamie Pickens is going to pick up the foul. That's her fourth, I believe, Sarge, as well. And Salavail will take the 90-foot walk down to the other end. As Jamie couldn't get the two shots to go. Nope, that's not enough. I thought that was the fifth. It's only the fourth team foul. So my bad on that. 
They bring it on the inbounds, and Kobe Pemberton will get fouled in the backcourt. And now they will walk down to the other end. Must foul situation, obviously. So they head down to the other end for shots here. Wow, what a game. I tell you, back and forth, both teams will represent in that national tournament in a couple of weeks. As Kobe Pilperton at the free throw line will take the shot. She rolls that one in. Five-point lead. You're on that odd number right now. How big is that three-point line in these kind of games? It's huge, especially if you can get a quick shot out there. A quick make can change the game at any moment. Pemberton, ice in her veins, nails that one. Timeout, Saints will take a break here. We'll take a 30-second timeout and come back with more action. Don't leave us, it's basketball in its finest right here from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. We invite you to stay at one of the newest hotels in Great Falls. Warm, friendly atmosphere and a friendly staff that's ready to assist you in your every need. When you check in, this is the kind of room you will receive, clean and comfortable, where you get wonderful breakfast and how about a nice glass of wine upon your check-in. Easy check-in with your professional team to assist you. Make your next reservation at the Gibson, downtown Great Falls. Inbound pass will come to Keller who hesitates dribbles here. They'll go to Garrett's left wing, three on the way, looks good, missed it. Long rebound from Albrecht, she falls to the ground. Pemberton's got it, fights off the defender. Pemberton has it, gives it over here, and a foul will be called as the Saints have to foul in the backcourt. And we will go down to shoot free throws for the Argos now. As they walk down to the other end. Up 71-65. And we go to the charity stripe, Monique Carter. We'll take a couple of free throws coming up here. And Mo has 12 points. You can make it 13. You can make it 13 on that shot. A game that has been tied in double digits, I think over, I think 11 times, but again, unofficial. Here's Mo's shot, it is up good. Nailed that one as well. Mo knocking it down, makes it 73-65, 40 seconds to go in the game. Here comes Keller back the other way. Trying to get something to go here. Drive to the glass, goes up, rolls around, couldn't get it to go, rebounded. Salavea, Maldonado will get grabbed and that might be number five. Yep, I believe that's number five there on Pickens. And they did call it on Jamie. Yep. And she will foul out of the contest with 28 seconds to go. Jamie Pickens will foul out and will leave the game with, oh, 24 points in this championship game. And the Carroll fans have seen enough. They are heading to the exits as they all arise over there and start walking down on that far sidelines. Free throw is good. Ashley Maldonado makes it 74 to 65. We have awards coming up, and that one is good as well. And a timeout will be called. Let's break with them. We'll hear a word from our sponsors with a 30-second timeout. Timeout on the floor as the Argos are up in this one. Saints will bring it on the inbounds. 20 seconds to go. And they take that Albrecht out to Garrett. Garrett's step back three is on the way. Kiana Fowler, which didn't need to be fouled. Why is the question mark? Coach Bill goes, what? And she will foul out of the contest with 18 to go. Lee will check in. Kiana checks out of the contest. And only the four points to her credit. Worked hard defensively, though. 
What a coaching plan from the University of Providence on the defense, really taking care of the defensive end as Garrett Smith the free throw. Well, 18.9 uh, to go. And Garrett's next shot is good. She makes the second of three. Makes it 75 to 66. Next one is up, and that is hard off the irons. No good. Rebounded, fought for. Scrum Lee is in there. And jump ball will favor the Saints here with 15.3 seconds to go. Saints wait for somebody to get open. They will have to go out to Keller. Keller with that left-handed dribble, kicks left side. Step back three on the way, off the iron's no good. Dixon with the rebound and says, where are you, Ashley? Where are you, champion? Frontier Conference champions is going to be the University of Providence as they defeat the Saints 75-66 to in this one. And the thing is to remember that both teams will represent, of course, in the national tournament. They will both represent here. And uh, that is going to come up in a couple of weeks. Awards presentation coming up in a little bit. Thoughts on the game? It's pretty good. Very good, especially after such a slow start. You know, it was 10 to 13 after the first quarter. They really ramped it up here, especially going to the fourth. Maldonado took over over 10 points. This is an exciting finish. Congratulations to the Argos. So they get the victory in this one. And as mentioned, they will get things set up here and have a presentation coming our way on that far sidelines. Champions of 2023-24 are the Frontier Conference Lady Argos. As you see them celebrate out there on the floor number of people will gather around as they have the presentation coming up here in just a little bit. We're looking forward to that. Thank you to everybody that helped out with this tournament. Well, I tell you, impressive to say the least. And we are proud to host it year in, year again. And I'll tell you, when, I couldn't believe when she drove into the basket that time she drove in. You can hear them on that far sidelines. We kind of hook up the announcer over there. And you can see them all kind of getting lined up for this awards presentation. Exciting to say the least in this. And a big thank you to the University of Providence administration, Doug Ashley, our athletic director, Jim Sargent, and the entire Argo Athletic Department, along with all the volunteers. This doesn't happen without a slew of volunteers up in hospitality, on the doors, and uh, getting everything cleaned up between games for running another great championship weekend this year at Pacific Steel and Recycling Arena. We thank you fans for supporting the teams throughout this whole year, this whole women's basketball season. Thank you for being here in attendance today to be part of really something special. Hey, just a reminder, Carroll College will be hosting an opening round. The opening pod of the NAIA women's basketball beginning Friday, March 15th in Helena. Presenting the Frontier Conference Tournament Championship, women's Frontier Champion, automatic qualifier to the NAIA tournament opening round, March 15th here in Great Falls. Your winners, champions, the University of Providence, Argos. Great job, ladies. Fantastic. When you got it, you got it. Never give up. I think that's the motto of our Argo ladies.
Big smiles on the faces as you see the University of Providence Argos picking up the victory here in this one. Of course, both teams will represent going forward. Each will host a national pod and play in games. Congratulations to. Thank you, fans. Let's get ready for another great season next year. Hey, by the way, do drive safely out there. No kidding. Dial 511. If you're heading out of town, please. The roads are really nasty out there between here and Helena. So please take your time, drive safely, get home, and we'll see you back at the ranch here again. I am the, champion. the championship t-shirts are being donned. As you see, they're being put on here. And congratulations to this entire <laughs> Frontier Conference. Thank you, Argo. As you see Jason out there hey. walking around. Hey, hey, hey. Well, that is going to do it for our broadcast here for this weekend. And thank you to everybody that was involved in it. As it is Montana Tech picking up the win on the men's side. And the University of Providence get the win on the ladies' side here for this one. And a game that went back and forth with, uh, I believe, 11, maybe 12 ties. And then it was just the University of Providence down the stretch hitting free throws and picking up the win in this one. So, congratulations. We've got more basketball information coming your way. And, of course, we've got more basketball as we get ready for March Madness. For Caden, I'm Jim Sargent, and we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. It is Montana Tech men, number one, and the University of Providence women ended up number one in the broadcast here from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls.